Indeed, I don't ascribe purity to myself. Why is the reason why Yusuf السلام, says that I don't ascribe purity to myself? Why does he say that? The reason why he says that is because in the previous ayah, he, he said, أَذَلِكَ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبِ So that the Aziz know, uh, knows that I didn't betray him in his absence. So now Yusuf السلام, he felt to himself that I'm ascribing goodness to myself. So now he, feel, he feels obviously the uncomfortable, he doesn't want to ascribe any goodness to himself. So now he humbles himself uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of the people and, and he says that I'm not the righteous one. He, obviously he doesn't want to ascribe any sort of goodness to himself. He wants to be humble. So then he says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي I don't ascribe any purity to myself. Meaning that I don't say that I'm immune to, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm good and I'm protected from sleeping. So Yusuf is ascribing humility uh, to himself. Then he says, إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّا غَتُمْ بِالسُّوءِ Indeed the nafs, it persistently commands towards evil. So the nafs by itself, if a person doesn't train the nafs, it obviously is inclined towards desires. So there are three stages of the nafs. There's nafs, amara, and then in the middle there's nafs, lawama, and the highest is nafsi mutama'inna. So the lowest sort of nafs, which we obviously as believers, which we must try to uh, not be in that stage, is nafsi amara, where a person he is always listening to his nafs, and the nafs is constantly calling him towards evil, and he's listening to uh, to the nafs. And then you have another stage, nafsi lawama, which we obviously must uh, try to reach. That stage where a person, if he falls into some wrong, then he immediately feels remorseful in front of Allah Taala, and he turns to Him in repentance. And then there is an even higher stage, nafsi mutama'inna, which we obviously must uh, aspire to. And that is where the nafs is always uh, always content with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Yusuf is saying here that indeed the nafs, he always persist persistently commands towards evil. إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ Rabbi Except the one whom my Rabb, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has mercy on. So the nafs, he always commands a person towards evil. So the nafs, the nature of the nafs, as we uh, as has been said, is to call a person towards evil, and the nafs doesn't like to make any effort when salah time comes or when uh, it's time to read the Quran. For example, the nafs will make the person uh, become lazy, etc. But ma rahima rabbi, except the one whom Allah Taala has mercy on, my Rabb has mercy on, meaning that whoever uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has mercy on, he will be saved from the evil uh, whisperings of the nafs he will be saved from the uh, desires of the nafs and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy will enable the person to do a good acts and then inna rabbi rahim indeed my rabb is the one who is all forgiven all merciful so whenever we accidentally or whenever we commit a mistake and we give in to the desires of the nafs we must keep in mind that indeed Allah ta'ala is ghafoor all forgiven uh, Rahim, all merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive. He is the one who uh, we must obviously have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, after we commit any sin, we must have hope in Allah ta'ala's forgiveness. We must not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon. Uh, Toward the end of the Shama'il, Imam Tirbidi Rahmatullahi, he'll mention <coughs> two asr, two statements. What are the two asr? Inshallah, we'll quickly just go through them.
حدثنا محمد بن علي قال سمعت أبي يقول قال عبد الله بن المبارك إذا تليت بالقضاء فعليك بالأثر عبد الله بن المبارك رحمة الله عليه هو the very great محدث scholar of hadith the استاذ of Imam Bukhari رحمة الله عليه who is also counted amongst the jurist and a Sufi a great sheikh عابد was a very very pious person and a <coughs> cautious person he is also among those who memorized the hadith hafiz of hadith many of his virtues and capabilities have been mentioned in the books very famous person student of Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi he said if ever one becomes a judge or arbitrator then always follow that which has been narrated so don't always use your logic don't always use your own you know understanding follow what the narration has you know that is where the problems are happening today so in the commentary as the Sheikh Zakir Rahmatullah he mentions the object here is that one should not follow one's own view and completely rely on one's way, own way of thinking but should follow the sayings of the pious predecessors and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. This is the general advice of Abdullah ibn Mubarak Fatulari. In respect of all verdicts, whether it refers to the verdicts of justice or otherwise, as has been mentioned, Imam Tirmidhi Rahmatullahi has mentioned this as a general advice at the end of his Shamali. This is the view of all the commentators of the Shamail. According to this humble servant, this may have been a special relation to this chapter that the interpretation of a dream is also a verdict. Therefore, in this too, one should not confuse others by giving one's own judgment, but should refer to the interpretation of the learned ones of the past. Many interpretations of dreams have been related from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and the Tabi'in. The ulama of the Sciences of Interpretation of Dream Sales have written It is necessary for one who interprets dreams to be understanding, pious, cautious and have now knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One should also possess knowledge of the Arabic language and its related sciences Many other conditions and adab have been stipulated in books on the interpretation of dreams because Imam Tirmidhi Rahmatullahi mentioned this in the last chapter which is about seeing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in his dream uh, just before he finishes the book that is why Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullahi has given this explanation <coughs> The second asar Haddathana Muhammad ibn Ali qala Haddathana Nazar ibn Shumail Abba'ana ibn Awf Ali ibn Sirin qal Hadha al-hadith deenun Fanzuru amma ta'akhuduna deenakum Ibn Sirin, Rahmatullahi, he says, this knowledge, the knowledge of hadith, in the same manner as all other religious subjects, are included in the deen, is part of the deen. Therefore, before acquiring knowledge, be aware from whom knowledge is being acquired from. So you need to show. Nowadays, it's the opposite way. What do we say? Don't look at who is saying, look at what he's saying. In a, to a certain degree, this could be correct that we should take the wisdom from wherever it is coming from. But at the same time, sometimes a good word is being said, but the person saying it due to his aqidah, due to his beliefs, due to you know his way of understanding, his mentality, there may be a different conclusion he's trying to come to, different agenda he's trying to come to. Like when the khawarij fitna happened in the time of Ali radiallahu anhu. What was the slogan? It is hukmu illa lillah. There is no command except Almighty Allah. In the verse of the Quran, but Ali radiallahu anhu immediately he said, "Kalima tu haqin urida bihi al-baatil." The word is true in the words of Allah, but the intention they are trying to come to out with, the conclusion they are trying to make out of this verse of the Quran, is batil, is false. They are trying to make wrong conclusions, and that is where what is happening today. Where many people, you know, nowadays people they don't want to go to the local masjid to you know to study the deen of 
but they want to go to YouTube, Facebook, and many people they say, oh, that is what we need to cater for nowadays. To a certain degree, we should cater. But our youth are listening to such people out there on the Facebook and all this, who are making a complete mock of Islam. Just a few days ago, one person, you know, he told me that uh, I know many actors who are listening to a certain person. And uh, what do you think about him? So I looked upon him a little bit just to see how it was. He was making a complete mockery of the deen. I said, subhanAllah, you know, he's trying to propagate the deen. The way he has taken the mick out of Islam, the way he has taken fun out of Islam, even his own Islam seems to be on the line. You know? So we need to understand, you know, who we are taking the deen from. So in this commentary, Hazrat Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullahi says, Muhammad ibn Sayyidin Rahmatullahi was also an Imam of his time and is a famous Tabi'i. He acquired ilm from many of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and is regarded as the Imam of the art of interpretation of dreams. His interpretation of dreams are hujjah, testimony. The object of his advice is that prior to acquiring knowledge from a person, one should first thoroughly investigate the state of the person's piety, honesty, religion, and maslak, rule of conduct. One should not follow the sayings of every person because the following of the sayings of an <coughs> a religious person has an effect. This has also been commanded by Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu in a few narrations. This is a general advice as mentioned in Athar number one in the first quotation. This quotation may also be relevant to the chapter of interpretation of dreams as this subject is also important. When a good dream is a portion from the portions of prophethood, Nubuwa, its importance can be understood. Therefore, one should always be careful from whom one is seeking an interpretation of dreams because this is in that chapter. Is the person capable of interpreting dreams or not? It is for this reason that Imam Tirmidhi has mentioned this asar, this narration here. This advice of Ibn Sirin is not particular or confer, confined to the subject of dreams but includes all other sciences, everything. The more important the signs are the more it becomes necessary to seek a competent and knowledgeable person. In our times, which is close to the times of Qiyamah, now Hazrat Sheikh Zakir is writing this maybe 50, 60 years ago. Allah knows best. You know, he's saying this is the time of Qiyamah. In those days, they were not the fitna that we see today, but yet he is mentioning this. He's saying that uh, <coughs> the more important. You know, we are very close to Qiyamah. A very dangerous and detrimental element has appeared. That every person, however unlearned or irreligious, after delivering a short inspiring lecture or writing an article on an aspect of deen, begins to be considered as Allama or an Alim. And by donning colored clothing, <coughs> begins to be regarded as a Sufi. Hence, people ignorantly begin to follow such a person. In the beginning, the general public, due to some misunderstanding, begin to following such a person. And because of their ignorance, they are caught in the web. This is because of general misunderstanding, which has entered the hearts of the public. That uh, see what is said and not who has said it. Like I mentioned just now, that is the slogan. That don't look at who is saying it. Look at what is being said. To a certain degree, like I mentioned, it is correct, but not always. You know, we need to understand who is saying it and with what agenda it is being said. <coughs> Although this saying is true, Hadith Sheikh Zakir Rahmatullah is mentioning this, it is for those who understand and differentiate that which is being said. It is a fact, and or is it a fact or is it false? Those who cannot differentiate should not follow the saying of every person they come across, as this will result in a bad and detrimental ending. It is for this reason that in these times, if one claims to be a saint, imam, or prophet, and even Allah, a person claims to be Allah, forbid, also one group always immediately begins to follow him. He'll always have a little following. And to Allah is our complaint 
and he is the one that grants assistance <coughs> so no matter how evil a person's you know uh, deviancy can become you know how apparent everybody knows that this person what he's saying is wrong yet he'll always end up with some following you know he'll always have few people who'll always be there to <coughs> Allah protect so it's very very important that uh, the knowledge that Allah has given us, the knowledge of Qur'an, the knowledge of Hadith, before it was acquired from people, before it used to be acquired from ulama, then people's memory started getting weaker, so they started, uh, you know, compiling it into books. So the books that we have today were those that were being written from the ulama. In the time of Rasul Sallallahu there was no book, even the Qur'an was not there as a compilation. They used to just write it on leaves and bones and stones, etc. <coughs> there was no book. The Prophet Sallallahu whatever he used to say, the Sahaba used to remember it. They used to follow it and that was the deed. Nowadays, the books which were written, you know, as a, because the memory has become weak, as a, you know, as a means of just preserving it, as a means of just remembrance. Now, people are using that as the base. The book says this. And they want to study the books on their own. Yeah, general books are okay. But when it comes to, you know, books of Quran, books of the words of Allah, books of uh, uh, regarding tafsir, hadith, then we need to be very, very careful. <coughs> like a person, he came to Umar radiallahu anhu when he was in Arafat. He was in Hajj. And he said, I have come from Kufa. <coughs> and in Kufa, there is one person when he sits down to explain Quran, he doesn't have any notes, any books anything in front of him, from his memory, he's explaining Qur'an in a nice way. So Umar very, became very, very angry. He said, who is this person? Tell me his name. How dare he uses his own memory, his own understanding to explain the Qur'an? How dare? Is the Qur'an everybody's cup of tea that everybody can just, you know, f- understand it in their, in their own way? Then... <coughs> Then uh, he said that, give me his name. So then the person said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said, you should have told me before. He said, there is no, pers- no person on the surface of this earth at this moment in time who has the right to do what he is doing except for him. He- only he can do it. If it was anybody else, I would have taught him a lesson. But because it is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he has the right to do it. And there is a quotation of, in Bukhari from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu <coughs> that... Uh, he says that there is no verse in the Qur'an Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu says There is no ayah in the Qur'an except that I know exactly when it was revealed, why it was revealed, how it was revealed And if there is anybody at this moment in time, he's saying this after the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, in the time of the Tabi'in He says if there is anybody who has more knowledge of the Qur'an than me at this moment in time, I will go to him and learn from him such a statement, such a bold statement that I know everything about the Quran at this moment in time if you have to ask me. Allah give all of us the understanding. Allah give us the understanding of deen. <coughs> you know, the aim of deen is to bring people close to Allah, close to the deen of Allah. You know, today many people are listening to the words of uh, deen on YouTube and all these places, which is making them more relaxed about the deen, making them more, you know, Making them less worried about the Akhirah. Making the Few people are making a complete, like I mentioned, complete mock out of the deen. I'm thinking that this person... What, what joke is he making out of the deen? And yet, people, our youth in the hundreds and the you know, multitudes are listening to such type of people. Because it's easy. You know, you, know, you just uh, log on to social media and it's there. Once upon a time, these type of people were not given a platform anywhere. But now, the social, now because of social media, they have made their own platforms. So we need to be very, very careful who we listen to in this day and age for our own protection of Iman. What they may be saying is the Qur'an, what they may be saying is Hadith, but the agenda behind it, kalima to haqqin urida bihil batil. The words are true, but the intention, the agenda behind it is totally false. So we need to understand. Allah give all of us understanding. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdul